O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known God's deeds among the peoples, glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. To all who are seeking the Lord this day, wherever you are, whatever your life's circumstances, we welcome you today for this message of hope and prayer. May you feel God's presence near and know that God loves you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we know not how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praying as we ought. No less a theologian than the Apostle Paul readily admits in our epistle lesson for today that we do not know how to pray as we ought. What a statement coming from St. Paul, one of the founders of our faith. 
we do not know how to pray as we ought. That is quite a statement coming from a man who seems to have an answer to every question and problem in the church. He is the authority. What about eating food offered to idols? He's got an answer. What about fighting and conflict among Christians? He's got a response. But when we come to a fundamental practice in our life of faith, how do we pray? Paul shrugs his shoulders and confesses, we do not know how to pray as we ought. Now, in a way, that is comforting to us, because if a spiritual giant like Paul says that something like prayer is beyond our knowing, well, we might be forgiven if we refuse to say anything in the prayer circle at the end of the meeting. I, I just don't know how to pray, and I have it on good authority. <laughs> When we pray, we know that we are approaching the throne of God. And what can we say to God? There seems to be a great unpassable gulf between us. God is holy and just, merciful and compassionate. And we are a bundle of anxieties and inconsistencies, sins, and mistakes. How can we converse with the living God without feeling inadequate or perhaps even arrogant for the attempt? How dare we approach the throne of God? We just don't know how to pray. But what if we think of prayer? as simply a way of opening ourselves to God, to God's loving presence, and simply try to think with God and attune our wants and needs to God's will. Maybe then we will find that prayer is not a way for us to get what we want from God, but primarily for God to get what God wants from us. Whether or not we think that prayer works, helps or changes anything or anyone, I find it helpful to remind myself that the primary purpose of prayer is simply to be with God in an unencumbered, direct honest, open, and yet focused way. Let's remember that in Jesus' last prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before he was crucified, was the sentence, not my will, but thy will be done. Paul reminds the Christians in Rome that the very Spirit of Christ is right there with us, interceding for us with sighs too deep for words, teaching us, mentoring us how to pray as we ought. We are not alone. Thanks be to God that we don't have to work desperately to communicate with God on our own. God loves us too much for that. We have been given the Holy Spirit to help us speak and listen to the God who so desperately wants to speak with us. In the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Spirit who helps us pray. Amen.
sharing a meal with Christ, we know we are accepted and reconciled. Communing with Christ, we encounter a transforming friendship. Let us enter into the joy of our Lord at this table. For I received from the Lord that which I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord God, we have received your word and have tasted your truth. Jesus Christ, the Son of your love, we pray that he may guide us and that we may live with each other in his wisdom and love and so grow in the faith that the future is his 
today, every day, forever. Amen.